Oh no, it's an Emily Jones, the never quite a right in the dome. He's not like you and me, hell how could he be? It'd be more normal if he only What's going I want to be one of the people who explain Asperger's to other people because at the end of the day, at least from my vantage point, uh, having Asperger's is just pretty much being a normal person or just being someone who's a little bit eccentric. But then again, aren't we all a little eccentric in some way? Having Asperger's is definitely going to feel a little bit like you're stranger than the last. It's frightening being strange. It's, it's frightening feeling alone, you know, having obsessions that you like, having certain things that you can't always talk to friends about, it's going to feel a little bit like you're out of the loop. What's going on, Anomaly Jones? How are things hanging at home? How's your mom and dad? Your illness, your Asperger's illness, is a neurological disorder, though I don't know if I would really call it a disorder because that would imply that there was something wrong with you. Anything that is shown as normal is common. Anything outside of that, you must be crazy, you must be retarded, you must be something, but you're certainly not the textbook definition of normal. I don't think people were ever meant to operate the same as somebody else. I wasn't told there was anything wrong with me, but I did grow up with the idea that if you have a syndrome, there is something wrong with you. Mom told me about Asperger's um, right before I was a teenager. I had no clue as to what that meant, so I didn't think anything of it. It isn't until you reach your teenage years that all of a sudden you start questioning. It's not enough that you know the kind of music you like, you know the kind of girls that you like, you know your sexuality and whatnot. That's when you really start to grow up. And a part of growing up is really trying to know you, know yourself. Going through school was an interesting time to say the least and not always in a very positive way. I had to face some people who wanted to punch me. You know, I had to face some sort of scathing, sarcastic remarks from other people, mostly from girls. Luckily, I did have friends. You know, I had four friends that I used to play ball with, that I used to watch cartoons with, that I used to visit that was right next door. But in elementary school, things felt a little, I don't think hellish was the word, but you can tell I was bullied. For most teenagers or most preteens, trying to hang with yourself is a huge ass problem. You know, it feels a little bit like you are, I don't know if freak is the word. You feel a little alienated, but for me, it wasn't a big problem. I was alone, but I wasn't really lonely. I was already used to being on my own, sitting on my own, you know, writing poetry, you know, maybe writing about music. I was already introverted as is, and once again, it didn't really bother me. It wasn't until I was probably in college that I started to really look it up and figure out exactly what that really meant. And it's because of that that I started doing more research, I started observing myself, and from there, I'm like, okay, I have Asperger's. What can you do? You will find me on the bridge of anxiety, demons at my feet, and they're telling me. I didn't feel like there's something right or wrong. I just felt like it is what it is. One of the traits I will tell you about having Asperger's is that we have obsessions. Of course, mine is music. I've always, always been into music. As far as making music, that didn't happen until I was in college and I was 20, 21. Right after I broke up with a longtime girlfriend of mine, I started figuring out some way to keep busy. And 
that inspired me to pick up a guitar and started writing songs. One of the feelings that we keep having as people who are at Asperger's is that we kind of feel strange. We actually do feel weird. At some point, we actually do believe it. And we kind of feel like aliens. I wanted to make the kind of music that reflects Asperger's syndrome. I decided to make a trilogy album as opposed to just one album. The reason I wanted to make it a trilogy is because there's a lot of traits you can cover in songs. Well, I have a sort of concept or a theme that came with both titles, Human Beyond Repair and Postcards from Another Planet. I originally had Postcards from Another Planet because it's one of those moments where when you have Asperger's, you feel like you came from another planet. You feel so different. As for Human Beyond Repair, that title, I guess you can say it was one of the titles that I kind of picked out of jest. I got human because we are human. We want to let you know that we're human just like anybody else. We're normal just like anybody else. The Beyond Repair part is where the comedy comes in because Beyond Repair acknowledges that anything that anybody else does, I guess you can say we kind of do to extremes. And my album is kind of a guideline into dealing with anybody who had Asperger's. Having Asperger's feels a little bit like you know you're normal, but everybody else kind of feels like you're, you're some sort of odd case. If Asperger's is a musical genre, really it would be anything that fits within the criteria of what it feels like to have Asperger's. And having Asperger's is kind of being a little introverted, feeling like you are normal, but everybody else looks at you like you're not really normal at all, or you're, you don't fit into this round hole. Go home. You're not the type I wanna know. Your freedom is a anything that kind of takes your mind elsewhere. And since apparently our minds are always elsewhere anyway, or not necessarily within the now where everybody else is, I feel it's within my power to go on and make music that reflects that. And as you're understanding yourself, be wary of the fact that there are some people who either can't or simply refuse to understand you. And that's the worst thing about having Asperger's, that you know how you are, you know that sometimes you can be a little on the different side, but most people will just dismiss that as, you know, being different would be, you know, the sort of music you listen to or a sexuality that you have or coming from certain places or how you were raised, definitely how you behave. Sometimes people with Asperger's can say that they have a tough time looking people in the eye. And I personally think that one of the things that add to having Asperger's not looking people in the eye, it has more to do with trust. Anytime you look at some people in the eye, it's more like, can I trust you to kind of look at me and not see some sort of a mess or some sort of, can I trust you to look at me as a normal person? I mean, amongst the 27 years of my life, I've had failures. I've had moments where I've screwed up or had some things that were not perfect, but I don't want to be the type of person who says, ah, it's because I've had Asperger's, you know? If I didn't have Asperger's, things would be better. I would like the world to see me as determined. And the reason why I picked that word is not just determined to really get my music out there, but determined to make sure that people really get their facts straight about autism, about Asperger's, about everything. I would love to be a motivational speaker who is ready to tell you that having Asperger's is not the kind of thing that is going to hinder you. In fact, it's something that could help you if only you understood it 
and you understood the world around you. And I wanted to be known as the type of person who doesn't blame anything that has ever happened to him on him having Asperger's and instead wants to be the type of person who looks at it as a plus. What's wrong? Anomaly Jones Need to phone your home Anomaly Jones